Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching our last video. We are so happy that you enjoyed it and uh, without you, we wouldn't be doing this follow-up. So with that said, in the last video, we shared a lot of details about building our own lithium batteries. And we kept it short and to the point, fearing that we would lose people if we got a little bit too nerdy and in depth. But shortly after uploading, we were pleasantly surprised with the hundreds of questions we got from people wanting to know more. In our first video, we did a pretty good job of outlining the specific type of lithium batteries that we're gonna be using on our boat. We decided to use Calib cells and a DALI BMS. Now, BMS talk did get kind of skimmed <laughs> over a little bit because it does get very technical very quickly. So that's definitely something we're gonna go into on this video is all about BMSs. But when it comes to the specific type of Calib cells and the general idea of what lithium power is versus AGM, that was covered in number one. This is number 1.5. So with that being said, let's get into the questions that most people have. We had a lot of comments and concerns regarding the lithium batteries themselves. And although we did address the chemistry in the first video, we just wanna go over it again to make sure we're all on the same page, especially when it comes to safety. Um, especially because there's a lot of confusion. So when people hear the term lithium battery, they tend to think of all the horror stories of batteries combusting Back and smoking phone. and things like that, which I completely understand because I was thinking the same thing when Chris told me he wanted to switch our boat batteries to lithium. But However, <laughs> the chemistry between the lithium ion batteries that are in your phone and the batteries that are in our boat, which are lithium iron phosphate, are very, very different. The battery chemistry is very stable in lithium iron phosphate, and that is why it is such a good option when it comes to not only recreational use like we're doing, but also industrial use. In all cases, they are extremely reliable, they're extremely safe, and the best part about them too, on another standpoint, is that they're recyclable too. So unlike lead acid batteries, uh, lithium iron phosphate can actually be turned in and brought back to life and be able to be used again, which is awesome. So that's enough on that. Let's go into the next question. After hours of research, we decided to go with the DALI BMS. And after we mentioned that in our previous video, we received a ton of questions about it because DALI has received some bad press. That bad press at least lately has been chalked up to the temperature sensor not functioning on the low temperature cutoff. And we actually don't know if our BMS doesn't work in that regard. We've never brought the temperature below 32 degrees. So only reason I say this is because I've seen Will Prowse take these battery management systems completely apart and dissect them. And nine times out of 10, they just don't have a temperature sensor or they don't function at all. There's never been an issue with our BMS other than that one problem of, I don't know if the low temperature cutoff works or not. I do know that the high voltage cutoff works and I do know the low t voltage cutoff works. Again, everything else that it should do, it's doing very well. And the overall build quality of the BMS has been stellar. Uh, all of the cables and the actual heat sink that it is built out of is all A-class stuff. And it's honestly amazing that it only costs 160 bucks. Yeah, and also another note is that many drop-in lithium batteries, so a lot of those name brands that you see out there use DALI components. So that's pretty cool also um, to keep in mind. And fun fact, you don't actually need a BMS. If your cells are healthy, and you have other fail safes in place, you don't technically need it, but again, for $160, what's the peace of mind gonna cost you, you know? The BMS is definitely the fail safe when it comes to knowing that you have something in between the load and the battery. So if there's ever a problem with the charger where it tries to give it too much power, the BMS will protect the batteries and not let anything bad happen to them. So in our experience overall, we have had success with the DALI BMS. It's been almost over a year using the system and it's worked great. We've had no issues. The cell balancing has done a wonderful job and uh, we can customize it later. So if we decide that we want to get something with Bluetooth capabilities, we can upgrade. That is one of the many beauties of going DIY um, we have that ability. I'd love to be able to not have to go under our bed into the battery box 
and lift off the cover and individually check the cell voltage just because it gives me a peace of mind to know that the BMS is doing its job. And again, it's a future thing that I probably will have a BMS that will have Bluetooth connectivity in the next version. We received questions regarding how we wired the calb cells and BMS together into the boat and how that worked with our other things like solar. So Chris is really good at explaining this stuff because he's had to explain it to me a few times. So you really have two options when it comes to wiring eight battery cells together into a 12 volt battery system. Number one is that you can wire basically two battery packs independently of each other. So four cells on either side and each one of them gets their own BMS. Or you can do like what we did and wire two cells together and then wire each pair in series of each other. And all of that goes into one BMS before exiting the battery box. And when you do it like this, you can use one BMS. It has to be a large one. That's why ours is rated at 200 amps. And the reason I did this is because it seems more simple in my brain to have one BMS to do the work of two. Uh, again, going DIY, we have the option to change this later on. If I see any reason to put two BMSs on it to share the load, we will in the future. But at the moment, this is working very well for us. Not to mention it also saved us money. If we needed two BMSs, that is another cost. Although it's only $160, that is another $160 we did not have to spend. And I wanted to have a secondary BMS on the boat. So when we actually leave the dock for good, we had a backup plan. So that means we would have had to have had two backup plans. So we would be four. buying four BMSs, <laughs> which is expensive. Some of you guys noticed that we still have a sealed lead acid battery. Although we changed our entire house bank to lithium, we did keep one sealed lead acid battery. When you switch to lithium, there's inherent costs that aren't just with the battery, but also with all of the different ways you can charge the lithium batteries. When we did our rewire, a lot of the components on board were very outdated. So the only charger that we kept that is not lithium friendly is the alternator. So the way that we charge our lithium batteries with the engine is through the DC to DC charger. And the way that this works is that when the engine is running, the power is generated and gets sent straight to the starter battery. And this in and of itself is its closed system. So if we didn't have anything else going on, it would be completely happy. It would never touch the lithium batteries and it would just keep charging that starter battery. But when we use the DC to DC charger, you flip on the switch and a 60 amp load is put onto the starter battery. And I say it's a 60 amp load, but it's really just a redirection of power going through the starter battery into the DC to DC charger and then into the lithium batteries. And the DC to DC charger has a lithium profile. So when it senses the lithium batteries are getting charged, it'll slowly back off and eventually kind of kick off as soon as it gets to the 14.4 volts. So that's the reason that we went with keeping starter battery on board. Not only did it save us some money up front with not having to get a new regulator for our alternator, it's also, in my opinion, very smart to have a redundancy on board. We have two battery banks, so if there's ever an issue with either battery bank, we can kind of limp on one battery until another one gets back up and running, or if there's ever a problem where we deplete either battery bank, we can start the engine still and make power and get back up and running. The thing that Avocet didn't have when we first bought her was any sort of renewable energy. There was no wind or solar. So when we decided to buy our solar stuff, we got the stuff that's going to work with lithium power. We decided to go with the 20 amp Renogy Rover chargers, their MPPT line. These have lithium profiles built into them, so we can go directly from the solar panels straight into the lithium batteries without needing to use the DC to DC charger. In broad context, the DC to DC charger is only used when we're using the engine. The AC to DC and the solar are both lithium friendly, so those go directly into the lithium batteries. The starter battery isn't charged by anything besides the engine, so it is completely left untapped and doesn't have any sort of load on it either. So there's never a problem with it depleting. It just sits there waiting to start the engine. So I think that we 
covered all of the main questions you guys had. Obviously, if we missed anything, please feel free to drop it in the comments and we will respond as soon as possible. Um, again, after living with the system for one year, we love it. There's really no concerns. The only thing that I think we would change is upgrade the BMS to something that is Bluetooth compatible so Chris can geek out and look at his phone all the time to monitor our battery bank. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If we missed anything, please go over to our blog, svavaset.com, where we have this entire project listed out. Um, what you're looking for may be included there, as well as the details of the materials that we used. That's enough of the boring battery talk. We'll be back with our normal fun videos of more DIY stuff or more sailing stuff, hopefully. And until then, we will see you later. Bye, guys.